Hello and welcome to new video. Today we're going to take a look at Tuga de Maru in the Go Battle League here in the Great League version. As we had to ask on Twitter, of course, as Great League is currently not available for like, I don't know, four hours now. As we know of the Ultra League, if you haven't seen my Ultra League video to Katana already, like you should definitely check it out. But we're going to take a look at this um, new Pokemon Tuga de Maru, which is definitely an interesting Pokemon. It has a very decent typing with the Steel and Electric type typing has access to the move wild charge the move fasting and thundershock so pretty decent moveset all around um but yeah we're going to take a look and talk a little bit more about this pokemon in this video um of course you have to be a little bit careful with this here all people know that i'm running to tomorrow like otherwise i'm not asking on twitter for battles this event just started in the um, New Zealand area, and of course, I just did a remote rate, uh, remote rate to get this Pokemon, and I just did one, and this was the first I got there. Um, so yeah, you don't have to do a raid for this. Definitely don't do a raid. You're just going to get this in the wild anyway. For me, it's like in around eight hours, it's going to spawn in the wild as well. So kind of necessary to do a raid, but I just only do it to showcase this Pokemon as fast as possible on YouTube, of course. As we see here, my opponent going to be able to go for and baits before and now being able to KO, need to KO my, my Pokemon there. And I sadly just barely miss out of getting to the false thing, which would KO it from this range. This is Suyin Quillfish, and they're going to be able to win the game. Um, how do I like how do I like the Togedemaru? Togedemaru is a cool Pokemon. It is very comparable, of course, towards the Magnezone. Magnezone has access to also to Wild Charge, has a bait move with the Mirror Shot. Here you have the Falstinger. Mirror Shot can debuff the opponent's defense, and not defense attack, but uh, your own like here Falstinger can buff your own attack, so it's kinda I think Faustinger might be a little bit better, but here's the thing. Um, you have Spark on this. I think you actually would have Spark on the Togedemaru as well, but Thundershock is recommended. Um, but yeah, here on Thundershock, which generates energy a little bit faster even, while you have Spark on the Magnezone. Um, but the thing is, with Magnezone, you also have the Shadow variant, which then does more damage. And also with Magnezone, I think the Steel type coverage just helps a little bit more, to be honest. I think you also have a steel. I think you have Iron Head as well on the Toga Damaro, but then you don't have anything to bait with, so maybe it's not the best idea there. But I don't know, Toga Damaro just feels like it's missing something. It's very, very squishy. It does a lot of damage, as you're gonna be able to see here. It does a ton of damage with the Wild Charge, but it feels like it kind of like always misses a little bit in terms of damage output. Also, as well as like consistent damage output because you literally rely on the wild charge. If you don't run wild charge or like don't hit the wild charge, you're going to do next to no damage as neither the Faustinger or the Thundershock that can do really any damage at all. So it's basically just a Pokemon that can run wild charge. And that's basically it. It has a very decent typing, all good and stuff, but... Yeah, I'm not really too happy with this Pokemon. I think this Pokemon will not be as common other than like in special cups. But like, again, if there are special cups that certain, like only allow certain Pokemon, most likely a is also going to be available. And Magnuson most likely going to be a little bit better. Um, you can use it for the Ultra League as well. Going to be interesting how this is going to be, but you need a fully XL version for this Pokemon for the Ultra League. So it's going to be a little bit tricky, but yeah, I think this Pokemon is not bad, but it's definitely not going to be meta and I cannot really see unless they're gonna make an Alola Cup where this Pokemon can shine. As here said, yeah, I should have went for my move before. Um, we're going to lose this match because of this now. And I think I most likely would have lost either way, but I could have went for the Wild Charge definitely before here. Um, but I thought maybe they don't run the um, Aqua Tail, but they run Aqua Tail, which kind of screwed me over. Well, it's fine. Let's take a look a little bit at the battles. We see an, an Azumarill here in the lead against us, pretty decent fast. We see an Umbreon coming in. My team here, I have a double Ghost Line in the back with the Sableye as a safe swap and the Trevenant in the back. Main reason for this is people know that I'm running this. People are going to run fighting types and ground types, of course. So I am kind of forced to run my back line. Like the amount of Gfisk I saw in the lead were kind of insane, of course. Um, was surprised, but um, yeah, we're going to be able to go for another wild charge. You actually look at this wild charge, we are boosted by one stage, but it's double resisted, still does around half of itself. And I can now align my Pokemon perfectly here. 
This should be a pretty okay-ish win, hopefully. They actually bait me here. Very great bait by the opponent. We see the Azuma coming in now. They have a lot of energy here already. So maybe it's not going to be as easy. We can go for one Seed Bomb. They're going to shield this move up. We can let their move go through, which is going to be an Ice Beam. And we will see here that we can definitely shield this move up here. But it's going to be a little bit tough now because, of course... They still have the Nido Queen. The Nido Queen can go for something like uh, Earth Power against my Sableye. I am very low here. I can, I will be able to actually KO the opponent's Azumarill here. But they still have one shield left. I have one move here stored already. I can go for my foul play soonish. But I, of, of course, I need two. So I'm going to build up to two. But they go for an Earth Power. They KO me and they win with like. 5 HP in a dream. Look at this battle, by the way. This was my favorite battle. We see an opponent here with the XL Shiny Kabuto. Before, I didn't know that this Pokemon would get to 1,500 CP, but now you know. This Pokemon has access, which I don't only now know, to Mudshot, which is cool. Rock Tomb, as you can see here. Awkward Jet. And I think some other pretty horrible rock move i think rock blast or something so uh, the charge move kind of sucks for this pokemon rock tomb definitely the best one i don't think we ever had this in um rocket grunts did we i think with return this pokemon might be pretty interesting but um sadly i don't think we ever had this i know that we had the other version i'm actually not sure did we have the shadow version of the Kabuto, but let me know in the comment section if you know we see a Dragonite against us here. We can still go for the full full farm down here, I think, actually, which is going to be very nice. As we're going to see the opponent going back into the Kabuto, we can go for one seed bomb and we will be able to KO this Pokemon, which is going to be very good for us. As we see an Ataria in the back. Can we deal with this? Ataria's moves are all resisted against Togo Damaro. The Sky Attack even double resisted. We can build up to two moves here. We can go for one wild chat and go for another one. And we will be able to win the game. Good game there to my opponent. Next up, uh, we're going to see that we, of course, face one Stunfesic in the back on the lead here. That's going to be, of course, a very, very nice for me, nice for me, as this is a hard wall to my lead. There's nothing I can do, really. And I have to swap out immediately into my Sableyes. We can go ahead and go for some charge moves here. But, of course, my opponent can just go out of this matchup into that own Trevenant there, which is pretty awkward, as we kind of have to realign still. We cannot really go into Togo Damaro and do any damage to this Pokemon either. So, yeah, we're going to shield this move up. We see a Seed Bomb coming through. And we can go ahead and try to get this Pokemon to a range where we can then farm them down with our own Trevenant. Let's see, all shields are down. They go for the charge move. And we will see now that they are going to basically KO me. We can farm them down now. And we will see that they can go into their Jump Love. And I have to catch the move here, but... Honestly, I have literally no idea about the counts from Jump Love now since the move update. I knew them before and here I'm just gonna let the moves go through as this is nothing I can do anymore. Um, I could have still won this, I guess, if I caught the move here, but I had to catch the move and if I didn't catch the move, like, I was screwed. So, yeah, I was screwed here. We see the next opponent, Trevon indeed. Horrible, of course, again, we see a Lycanroc coming in. That's pretty decent for me, and they go straight for the move, which means this can only be a Psychic Fangs, which will not do any damage to me as we are Dark type. And we can go for our Night Slash, uh, not Night Slash, Foul Play here, and we will be able to farm a Pissy all the way down. Good game there. And we will see now the opponent coming into uh, Trevenant again. So it kind of seems like they're a little bit weak to Sableye in the back. I don't know what they could have in the back. But I'm going to go ahead and shield this move up, I think. Going to be a Seed Bomb, of course. But we can go for another Foul Play, getting the final shield by the opponent or relinking our Pokemon. As I expect them to have a Fighting type in the back, I go straight into my Trevenant and I was wrong. It's going to be a Hisuian Arcanine. Who would have thought? But this thing cannot even take one neutral Shadow Ball here and we will be able to easily win this game as we're gonna let this move go through. They go for one Shadow Ball here, but Togedemaru can just go for one Felstinger. And at least now Togedemaru going to be able to sweep this end game there and win us this one. Next opponent we're going to see here going to have um, some interesting Pokemon. We see a Swampert. Oh, hell yeah. All the ground types, please, against our Togedemaru. tomorrow. It's going to be amazing as we see a Frostless coming in. Yeah, because we have one turn advantage, we will always win this matchup. And they know this as well, I guess. And they just gonna let this move go through. Um, Frostless and Sableye generate energy at the same time. 
and also going to be able to get to the charge moves at the same time. So having one turn advantage basically there will always allow me to be able to win this matchup against the Frostless as they now have the Obama Snow against me. Um, I can go ahead and go into my Toge tomorrow. Of course, the Felsting are super effective, but I know that the Wall Charger would be way better here, but I don't know why I still go for the Felstinger. We will see how much damage it's going to do. Going to be super effective, going to be doing basically no damage for like a Shadow Bomber Snow from a Pokemon that's pretty squishy. Kind of crazy, but of course we have our Trevenant and of course we have the Go Battle Lag on our side here. We will be able to go for our Seed Bomb and we will be able to knock out this Swampert and farm down the Bomber Snow. Good game to my opponent as we see the next opponent having some fishy legs here. We see of course another horrible lead here with the Stunfisk against us. They go into their own Jump Love. Having access to Fairy Wind will make this matchup even worse. Fairy Wind is such a good poker, uh, like strong uh, fast move now on this Pokemon here. I actually wonder if we're going to see some jump off action in the regionals coming up this weekend. Would be definitely kind of interesting to see as we see the next opponent here. We go, we're just going to see them going for a shield and we can just farm down, hopefully farming them down a little bit lower, maybe get to two more foul plays. We have already one stored. We're going to farm up extra energy and we can go for one more foul play, trying to KO the opponent here and we will be able to KO the opponent's jump off, meaning we can realign, we can put our Trevenant against their ground type and let's hope that there's something in the back where we can do something with our um, token tomorrow but I most likely would expect that they have a, what's called Trevenant in the back on their own. I'd see what's going to happen here. We can go for, we can let this move go through and of course they have a Trevenant in the back. We can go for one bait here as we can go for the Seed Bomb and we can try to catch the move and we will be able to catch the move which is going to be really huge here. The Seed Bomb comes through. We can try to now CMP tie on the opponent because we are very squishy and they are not throwing either. So we can just go ahead, go for one Wild Charge. We will see that they're not th throwing, which means we can go for one Felstinger. Felstinger will KO, oh, we are very low. So the opponent doesn't get a lot of energy. And now we have the Stunfist against us. We can go for one Seed Bomb. Does this KO? I'm not sure it does. And we win the game here. Good game, very close one. Even though we got basically completely hard walled from the beginning. Another Stunfist, great. We can go into our Sableye. And they swap late into their Sableye, which means we're going to be able to win this matchup all the time again. Especially as I let the first move go through, I'm going to be able to now always shield, always throw my moves, always farm it down, and I will be able to win the match maybe just by like one shield disadvantage, but a little, little bit of energy advantage. This would be fine for me, and that's exactly what's going to happen now. We will see our shield coming up. We have some energy advantage, we have the switch advantage, and we can go for some nice damage against the Stunfels coming in here. The Stunfist definitely doesn't really want to face this foul place here as we can see that they go for a charge move most likely a rock slide. We'll be able to KO our Sableye already as we can now align our Tremnant against them and they don't really want to like to battle this Tremnant. They go for the Earthquake for whatever reason. I am not the type that you want to hit with this but we can catch on the Psycho Boost into our Togen tomorrow, we can now go ahead and go for some wild charges. They go for another psycho boost. This is fine for me as we will be able to survive this one pretty easily as it's resisted and they're double debuffed. Now we can go ahead, go for the first one here. First wild charge comes through, does a ton of damage. We can go for the false stinger, trying to get some more attack and we will be able to KO the opponent here. Now we are lining our Trevenant against the opposing Stunfisk. We can go ahead, go for one Seed Bomb, getting the shield here and we will be able to win the game here with one Shadow Ball. But yeah, Token tomorrow, not something that you really need. You can still get, of course, good IVs in the event coming up, but not the craziest Pokemon in the world. That's going to be it for the video. Thanks all for watching. See you next one. Have a great rest of your day. Bye. Bye.